Are you ready to learn about the property market? Then you're in the right place. This is Everything Property by Pivotal Homes, where we connect Australia's best developers, agents, home buyer specialists, wealth creation experts, and property advisors to the people of Australia. Broadcasted from Whitehall Studios on the Gold Coast. And now, here are your hosts, Hayden Ashton and Tom Egan. G'day listeners and viewers right across the country. Welcome to Everything Property by Pivotal Homes, where we connect Australia's best developers, agents, home buyer specialists, wealth creation experts, and property advisors to the people of Australia. Now, today's guests represent one of Australia's largest private development companies in Australia, Sadly Property Group. Sadly built some of Australia's most attractive residential communities. Sadly is a company built on trust and has been operating for more than 40 years. In that time, the company has developed 165 residential communities and attracted more than 100 international, national and state industry awards. Today's guests are highly distinguished professionals in the property industry, having over 35 collective years of experience. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Brooke Anstey and Andrew Cook to the show. Welcome, boys. Thanks, guys. Welcome, gents. Hey, uh, thank you so much for joining <laughs> joining us on this Monday morning. Feels like I'm having deja vu, but uh, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us on what I can imagine would be very, very busy um, after a weekend of sales and whatnot uh, on a Monday morning. But nonetheless, thank you for joining us. Now, what I normally like to do, uh, we'd like to do, sorry, is get context about yourselves, your your journey as people um, into the property industry, and then of course give us a rundown of of Satterley Property Group as an organisation and where they've you know what they've done and, and where they've come from in a, in a forty year uh, history as well. All right, sounds good. So what do you need? <laughs> you to can know? lead what the way. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, look, um, look, I've been in the property industry now about fifteen years, but yep. prior to that, I was in the tourism industry up in Cairns. Um, did a degree in accounting. I don't really know why I did that. Never used it. Um, ended up <laughs> living in Japan it's for a while. Amazing, many people say that. I yeah, mean, they do a degree in accounting. I did. I, that's yeah. what I, I started as yeah, well. I yeah, never yeah. used it. Yeah, no, I never used it. But um, look, it, it, it got me sort of uh, started in uh, different things. So I ended up moving to Japan for a while. Uh, loved it. Loved it up there. And then I uh, moved to Cairns and got into the tourism industry. Um, was quite fortunate to get some great jobs. Worked for a company called Skyrail. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Rainforest Cable yeah, that goes up. Absolutely. Owned by the Chapman Group. Um, the K- George the and Ken. What forest is that? The uh, come up, uh, up, uh, to, up to Karanda. Karanda. That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So I was a sales manager there for um, for a while, and um, and yeah, I travel traveled the world basically. They six months of the year, I was I was overseas or traveling, promoting Cairns and promoting Australia in the tourism industry, yeah. which actually was a, a great um, learning curve, learning about business to business relationships and, bu- and building channel partners and all this sort of stuff, which actually has helped me a lot <laughs> later on in the in the in the property industry, which has been great. But um, yeah, I did that for about twelve years with various companies, resorts, uh, the Cairns Colonial Club, a few other uh, of the bigger companies up in Cairns, and then um, I um, decided to. I met my wife and decided to get married, and thought I can't really keep travelling six months of the year um, if I'm going to have kids and ne- can ne- I? never be there. Or can <laughs> I? Be there? <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight's yeah, a wonderful thing. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, at the time, I was selling my house, and I. I I sold it and made some pretty good money on it. And the real estate agent said, why don't you get into property? And I went, oh, okay. So I did um, normal real estate for about a year. Um, didn't really enjoy it, but the owner of Skyrail was actually developing a, um, a, a very large development called Harbour Lights in Cairns on the marina j- in a joint partnership with a company called the Honeycombs Property Group owned by Peter Honeycomb, both out of Townsville. And um, they said, come on board and um, sell off the plan apartments for us. And I went, oh, okay, this is good. So I got into that. Um, very high-end apartments, off the plan, fantastic thing. But the problem was that the um, the uh, global financial crisis <laughs> happened, and um, and Cairns, you know, you're selling eight nine hundred thousand dollar hundred and two square meter apartments in Cairns for that sort of price. This wasn't going to really mm. stack up anymore. So I got offered a um, a position in new homes with a with one of the biggest builders in Cairns at the time, which was great. Learned the trade basically from scratch from from there, you know, redesigning, costing, estimating, yep. all that sort of stuff, and really enjoyed that. Um, personal circumstances moved me to Townsville, and then. In, I, Townsville didn't sort of turn out the way I, was, I hoped, but um, I ended up picking up a job with the Housing Industry Association. So um, it was a really interesting move because sort of the uh, the uh, housing industry, the HIA is sort of the background of 
you know, working with government, working with policy, all that sort of stuff. I ended up being the, the state safety manager for um, for for the HIA, which mm-hmm. which made me move to Brisbane, which is where the position was based. And I was doing that for a while, and I was actually selling safety systems to. So I'm not a prof- I'm not a qualified safety person, but I was, I'm a, I'm a very I'm a very experienced salesperson. So they needed a safety manager um, who could sell the systems and then get the guys with the actual expertise to implement <laughs> yeah okay um so that was my role and um i was sold a safety system to one of the, to another builder in who was working out of springfield and he said um i've checked you out on linkedin what i need a salesperson why don't you come across and get back into new homes i went yeah okay because um i was living in springfield at the time i thought this is good you know five minute drive to work mm. so um so i got into that and um really enjoyed it and then um again i was sitting in my office in my display and i was friend of mine came in and said we need a land sales person over in Greenbank and I went oh man that's good I really like I really mm. enjoy I enjoy seeing developments coming out of the ground I enjoy seeing you know a big open farm turn into a you know a community mm. a, a place out to live nowhere, and, yeah. and out of nowhere put the roads in and you know mm. the way the way they cut the way these guys do all that stuff just amazes me still so to see the light come out of the ground I started doing that and I've pretty much done that ever since so I joined. I'm only relatively new to Saddley, unlike um, unlike some people. But um, um, I've been there about six months now. But really, really enjoying it. It's a um, it's a it's an amazing company to work for in the fact that it's very very flat organisational curve. Like um, mm. there's only sort of three steps to Nigel Saddley, who yep. owns, who owns the whole uh, owns the whole thing. With COVID, obviously, we haven't really I haven't met him yet, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> because he's in Perth. Um, and travel's a bit limited, but um, but yeah, I d- I'm really enjoying it. Our systems are great, our product's great, the team's great. We've got a small team in in Can- in, um, in um, Queensland, which Andrew will um, will go into a bit more. He knows a bit more about the history than I do, but um, yeah, loving it so far. Mm. Loving working with you boys as well. So yeah. um, let's um, yeah. likewise. That's me. <laughs> That's awesome. Andrew, yourself? Well, I started uh, well, in brisbane in about 2001 i was working for dad's company and uh, i'd just come back from sydney uh, where i'd worked at the uh, equestrian uh, equestrian center or equestrian venue for the 2000 olympics i did uh, a job there with auto as an assistant venue transport manager it was a great job uh, had a, an amazing time um, actually lived on site so it was uh, good fun came back and um the uh, dad's dad had a civil uh, engineering firm at the time, and uh, it was a bit of a short. You know, what was I doing? And ended up uh, working out at Forest Lake for mm. for Delphin and Lease for a while, and um, I was doing a bit of cadet engineering side of things, and uh, was there for about fourteen months uh, before uh, an opportunity came up at Springfield to uh, in mid mid two thousand and two. Uh, Sorry, yeah, mid two thousand and two to start um, as the project planner at uh, at Springfield Lakes mm. for for Delphin. So uh, in two thousand and two, I started there. Ended up doing uh, well, eight or nine years there uh, before moving over to um, or commuting for six months first over to Perth mm. uh, to work on the Alchemos project with Len Lee still. Land, land subdivision? Land subdivision yeah, okay. stuff, yeah. I needed a change then, so mm. I've uh, been at uh, Springfield for eight or nine yep. years. and uh, was um, I knew it? Uh, I knew it well, but mm. um, needed to, uh, you know, needed to have a change. So, got over to Perth and uh, moved over there, and uh, in two thousand and uh, early two thousand and eleven, I think, or late two thousand and ten, and um, you know, got over there and went. Well, did six months and needed a break. Mm. So, a mate of mine, uh, you know, he and I were sitting down one night having a beer, and I said, well. You know, we've always talked about uh, buying a pub. Let's go and buy a pub. Yeah. <laughs> so we ended up. Uh, Every the good yeah, thing happens over a bit. Yeah, that, that was it. My so best decision of the main. We started the business. <laughs> we started the business over a beer. <laughs> camping. That's right. Yeah. Just quit our jobs up. next day. Right. That's yeah. it. I've made plenty of bad decisions over <laughs> yeah, a beer, yeah. but uh, we won't talk about that. <laughs> that's it. The only other good ones. So, so we ended up, uh, yeah, getting a, uh, a little hotel in Threadbow with sixty beds, a bar, and a restaurant, and uh, so. Mid uh, 2011, I started the, um, the the 2011 ski season as a publican and a uh, a lodge owner, and uh, did three and a half years. Had a great time, yeah, really wow. enjoyed it. So um, that was uh, yeah. To that, I came back in 2014 to Brisbane and uh, was helping my old man. Um, he just bought 700 acres, or my mum and dad had bought 700 acres out at Dabra. And I was sitting at, um, I was helping him, yeah, you know, get it ready for, uh, well, yeah, help with the cattle and things. Because uh, it was a bit of a new venture for them, and so he's not he doesn't develop or anything like that. He's, he's just f- no, nah, he's retired. Yeah, now, yeah. So yeah, that was uh, part of it. we finished off his house in Barden, our family home, and yep. sold that, and um, 
you know, moved out. Uh, they were out at um, at Debra and was sitting at the the pub there having a beer with Dad and, uh, and got a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> it's a regular <laughs> thing, mate. Don't worry. Right. Runs in the family. Yeah, after this we're going to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really nice out there. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. awesome. So yeah. we're sitting there and uh, and the guys from Divine gave me a call and said you need to you know get off yeah. the bum and get back into the industry and uh, and come and work for us and when did an interview and uh, actually. <laughs> The interview was on a Friday and... Uh, Went to the pub. pub. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And I'm sitting there going, these boys are yeah, my type of guys. Yeah, so, yeah good. Uh, went straight over to the Hamo after, uh, it was yeah, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, over to the Hamo. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like, yep, yeah, enjoy working with these guys. I'd known some of them from uh, uh, from the old Glen Lease days. Yep. And um, did a few years there and uh, and then in 2017 started uh, with Sadley Property Group out at Ripley and um, I live out that way and uh, it was a really, you know, the first 18 months we were actually on site and uh, really enjoyed, you know, being out on site um, with the salesperson there and it was just, you know, a team of two in mm. uh, in Brisbane selling the, um, the project there and, uh, you know, really, you know, enjoyed i've done a lot out obviously in ipswich so it was uh, good to get back into it so and so you've seen that project from infancy from uh the ripley project yeah definitely yeah, yeah stage one so yeah yep. right so yeah. uh it was yeah there was no it was a, a paddock yeah an right. empty paddock <laughs> when we started <laughs> so and we'll touch on that uh, a little bit more in a moment but sadly property group as i mentioned operating for over 40 years 165 residential estates and over 100 international national and state industry awards it must be yeah yeah Certainly, an organisation that you're proud to be proud to be with. Oh, it's a great, uh, a great business, um, mm. a great entity for us to uh, to be involved. You know, Southeast Queensland. There's five of us, as Brooke mentioned earlier, and um, you mm. know we're looking to grow the business here mm. and mm. get some uh, brand recognition that um, you know that the guys in Victoria and WA certainly have. So, mm. yeah. mm. what was the state you mentioned briefly off here? One in four, or in Perth, or in Perth, roughly one, you know, one in four lots with 20, 25 percent ish market share in Perth. So uh, Nigel's really grown, you know, started the business in WA and in Perth, and That's has really huge. grown it from there. It's a, it's a massive, uh, you know brand ownership over there so massive and largest private developer in the country yes we're on part of yeah as we we're saying before pete mm. uh, from a public point of view so but being private nigel uh, has the business and um and, and as brooke touched on earlier it's a very flat structure for us and you know mm. we're, we're told to get on with our job and we get on with it it's uh, you know it's easy to uh, to make a phone call and mm. Um, get things done over and get one. things done and it would cut out a lot I'd imagine anyway without any experience in a public company space but through dealings as a builder when you compare you know, without any disrespect to anyone else but some of the public companies in terms of the processes and mm. the arduous sort of things that need to be done just to keep rolling through whereas it's publicly very, very you don't have different. to go through that yeah. <laughs> bullshit a little bit you know yeah. it's, you can, it's more of a relationship and it's not so heavily concentrated around the shareholders pocket you know 30 june or october 1st always hate those deadlines uh, w- yeah. we do have shareholders and we yep. um it's yeah it's less around yeah. the uh, the half and full year yeah. it's certainly around the profit you know that's a big a big part of it but yep. um there is less um of the actual target i, I remember the lend lease days where you know june 30 and uh, yeah, and december <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. Were, were big targets and uh, all sorts of things had to happen to get those yeah. plans registered and get things in and out by yeah, uh, yeah. those target dates but um yeah less so for us but it's still important mm. so. the big thing for me is um I, I have worked for some you know some larger larger developers and larger home builders and it's like I imagine it like a um, like a, a, a freight like a, a, a cargo ship as opposed to a um, as opposed to a speedboat. So yeah, you know, like if, if a big public company wants to change, it takes twenty mm. you know, all these different decisions and people to make the make the call before yeah. the ship can start to turn. Whereas with us, with a team of five in Queensland, especially, it's like um, yeah, we can pivot. We, we can turn pretty quickly. Mm. So um, so it's uh, it's very good. And as you know, as we were saying before about the structure being. Only five of us in Queensland. It's um, it makes life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, decisions can be made over a phone call and, and a quick email, and it's done. So, it, mm. it really works for me. And so, we don't have the information available, but if we look at like right now, this year has been quite turbulent. You know, in terms of, I mean, the whole world, but it's been interesting, certainly in the sales and and the new housing and land sales markets with all the incentives and the buyer activity out, out there at the moment, place, but. Obviously, Sadly has exposure to WA, Melbourne and Queensland right now. 
Do you guys have any intel on how those states are performing in comparison to Queensland or? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, well, Queensland, our, well, I work at the Ripley Valley estate. Yep. Um, I'm the, the sales guy out there. Um, we've <laughs> just exploded basically mm. in uh, June, June, yep. July. Um, yep. I started there in, uh, in May. Um, yeah, you know, got it. Got a few away. Then all that happened, and it just went. Crazy. You look like a rock star. You're going in demanding <laughs> upgrades. I, I, I want to increase. I want bonus. What do you want from yeah, me? <laughs> it, was, it, was unreal. it was nothing to do with the home build. <laughs> yeah, no. that's right. But um, but no, it's been fun, it's been phenomenal. Like since you know, the other stages one and two, then I got there in stage three, and we sold it out. Then stage four <laughs> sold out pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now we've pretty much worked through the the old. You know, so we had some lots in stages one and two that um, mm. weren't moving. We've now moved those. So, yeah, as I keep saying to the to my developer team here, I keep saying, "Come on, boys, let's get some let's more land on the ground." Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, but um, I mean, Andrew, know more about Melbourne, but um, yeah, <laughs> Melbourne's been yeah you know, tracking really well. It's obviously really? Um, oh, mm. a- amazing compared to the numbers compared to us. So obviously, prior to um, to COVID, it was mm. um, yeah, you know, it was going gangbusters yeah. down there. Um, the lockdown has certainly slowed it down, but they're still doing. Um, they've got three or four active projects down there. We've got three active projects up here and they're still doing double the numbers we are. So. Really? So that's mm. really surprising. I thought oh. it would have fallen off a cliff into it because they're obviously seeing it sight unseen and just rolling through it. They're doing everything. A lot of it's virtual uh, you know, uh, virtual site inspections. Yeah, right. Uh, all of the discussions with the, uh, with the agents is all virtual. And then um, they just recently, I think two weeks ago or 10 days, wherever it was, uh, allowed a 15-minute um, by appointment only, appointment face only, to yeah. face. So yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the rules in, in relation to like people on site with construction? Is that, is that, that must be tough too. No, nah, it, well, in Melbourne it's been, um, you know, I think it was 20 people per hectare, which from a civil point of view we never actually have 20 people per hectare. So, yeah. um, you know, the, the on-site side of things hasn't slowed down at all oh, right, in, in okay. Victoria. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Yeah, right, okay. And that so I'm aware of, actually. So <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been Disclaimer. down there. So. <laughs> oh, awesome. Now, obviously, like, being a, across uh, the land subdivision, you're seeing with the act wave of activity, what we're sort of seeing is this huge amount of influx of purchases on the back of, I mean, if you look at Queensland specifically, 25 grand home builder, 15 grand uh, first time owners grant, um, LMI, stamp duty, that sort of stuff. But the affordability is so good. If you look at someone like Ripley, like, f- you know, Mid fours, yeah. You're at ten percent. You're at you're yeah. at a ninety percent LVR. Yeah, the value proposition yeah, against like Victoria is yeah, exactly yeah. right. Whereas in we're amazed more of them aren't moving up here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> from being locked look, down down there. You look at Victoria and you're at you know someone like Melton for like six hundred or whatever, and you're like, this is how good how good's this? You know. But well, and then you look at our weather and yeah, everything else right. that happens up here, <laughs> and you wonder why they're down <laughs> in the pubs. <laughs> <laughs> we need a pub. <laughs> So what, tell me what, what are you seeing there like in terms of, um, you know, a lot of people purchasing, a lot, a lot, if, if you were even thinking about purchasing a, a, a first home or even an occupant home, now's when people are getting off out of their bed to, to do it. But are you seeing that, you know, with that wave, obviously there's going to come a certain level of unqualified purchase. Are you seeing there's a lot of interest, but maybe the finance is a little bit harder to get. You're seeing people drop off and yeah. what are you seeing in that space? Look, I, I haven't had any major issues yet. Um, mm. I've had one or one or two where the finance hasn't sort of stacked up. But um, uh, touch wood, I've, I've, I've been okay. We get this wood table yeah, for yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have aluminium. Um, we said we need that. Look, <laughs> look um, as far I mean, I, I try to qualify people as well as I can, obviously, yeah. make sure they've seen a broker. I've got a few you mm. know, different brokers that I can that I can sort of um, channel people through. Yeah. Um, that I know do a good job, and um, and as long as I, I'm pretty certain that, and I will you know, give the finance guys a call and go, look, you know, is this going to be okay mm. if I if I'm a bit worried about things? But in general, this this has been a very unusual market because what's happening is, um, like, I cannot tell you the amount of young single girls I've actually sold to, like you know, teachers in their second third year um, that live out there in the Ipswich way, and if they and they're coming with their parents. Mm. Yep. So basically, what's happening is in in those circumstances, and there's a few young guys as well, by the way, um, but a lot of single single people who just want to get into their market, and their parents are pushing them into it, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. They're saying this: so we've never seen this before. Yeah, you need yeah. to take advantage yeah. of this. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they're basically saying if you saw twenty five k on the ground, would you walk over it or would you yeah. stop and pick it up? Like you know, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. and, the, and the, that's what's happening. 
So because of that, like if there are any you know, um, deposit shortfalls, the parents are, are topping it up and all this sort mm. of stuff because they know that <laughs> the kid's going to get 25 grand yeah. back, they can pay them back later or whatever, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever happens behind the scenes, I'm not really aware of. But I've been, I've been pretty lucky so far in relation to, um, to fallovers, but it's just been, it's been crazy. People will come in and like I said, I had one person come in at 9 o'clock, signed an EOI at 10. I issued contracts at 12, they signed it by 2, and it was executed by 4. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I mean, that, that... And then you slammed it on your boss's desk, yeah. and there it is. <laughs> actually, 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 that was on the 30th. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, the funny thing was that um, Andrew, Andrew Hunter, the other... We've we got two Andrews who work with us, Andrew Hunter, who um, sent an email out saying um, it was a record because from when it was... When I issued it to when it was signed, it was two and a half hours. Yeah, wow. We, we still don't have people uh, lined up like they do. No, like yeah. they did have in, in Melbourne. Melbourne. No, you know, no. The, the camping out prior to uh, mm. yeah, our releases. Mm. So. Yeah. And yeah. how's the difference between? Because you've got a couple of sites in Queensland, two being in Brisbane, and one being in Cairns. How's that comparison being in Brisbane versus Cairns? So Cairns is going uh, just uh, just as nuts as uh, as it is down here. It's um, you know we, we're actually sold two years worth of stock in basically the last two and a half months it's uh, so you're now selling unregistered land we, we've sold everything up there unregistered yeah, we're, right. uh, we're we're building two stages up there at the moment and um we're about to lodge them like everybody else into <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for plan sealing and then yeah. titles coming into november so uh, it's going to be a busy uh, you know end to the year for everyone on the title side of things coming back to yeah. the fallovers with you know that brooke touched on earlier we have seen a few Mm. Um, mostly from that first weekend, so yeah. not a big number, but it was that first weekend mm. of when Home uh, Home Builder was announced and everybody ran out and um, you know put their names down. Yeah, um, we've seen with that qualification at sixty days uh, and you know working through. There has been a few fallovers, yeah. but um, Brooks actually done a really good job from his side of things, and he's had a lot less than uh, than our other two projects. Yeah, and look, good. and that's and that's he, a he, <laughs> work, <laughs> he works with good people. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's who you have that, you know, the relationship with builders that you've worked with in the past, there's always a certain trend on how they manage their clients. Absolutely. Yeah, before yeah. coming in, well, how are we assessing yeah. them, what's our, you know, past, and that's what's important for us as a builder to always manage our clients and our partners that we work with, you know, for your guys' sake on that side, because in the future we know we can get allocations because we've proven it in the past, mm, yeah. that these deals are actually going to get over Strong, the line. Yeah, and the same from our side, of you know, my point of view. I mean, like yeah. I love working with you guys because I know that the, the, the people are qualified. You work, you know, we mm. work together if there's any issues. We mm. work through things like yeah. we're working through one at the moment. Yeah, um, you know, we work together to make sure these things go over the line. Because at the end of the day, we just want people to get into their homes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. We just want to build. You guys just want to sell land that's and right. we just keep moving. And yeah. I think the fall, I mean, that's th you talk about that first weekend and I think there was so much excitement <coughs> around the home build. I think June 8th it was released, but there was no, it was 25 grand, but there was no idea on how no. that was going to go, how that was going to work. The finance you know? brokers didn't even know. Yeah, so like, mm. and it was only really like, what have we probably had a month, maybe six weeks of clarity around that? Like it hasn't, it took mm. sort, sort of, sort of took to mid September. Eight, well, yeah, that's, that's Right for mm. Queensland to actually get some yeah, rules around. Yeah, so everyone's it. going around and you know, which is good, like stimulating the market and purchasing and all that sort of stuff. But everyone's like, "Well, like, I don't know how I'm going to get the twenty five well, grand." Yeah, yeah. Th and they had to borrow it. Yeah, they had to borrow yeah. it. But people what were like, "Oh, just honor me the twenty five grand. I'm getting it at some stage." Yeah, <laughs> yeah but yeah, you had right. these agents uh, in these land sales offices, not as experienced, who are maybe like twenty or twenty two, and they're like, "How good's this?" You know, mm. they're doing the shimmy shimmy shake, and they've got the the, <laughs> the Aldi on lay by, and they're, yeah. they're happy days, and uh, yeah, yeah, and you know, without any clarity around that, and all of a sudden. They've sold out the whole estate with people just with EOIs, but as we know, EOIs don't don't settle. Oh, sorry, no. EOIs don't settle. No one gets um, no one right. gets anything. So, yeah, so yeah, no, very uh, certainly very interesting. But it leads me to the next question. Obviously, in the budget, we saw the there was no mention of the extension of the of the twenty five thousand dollar home builder grant. So it raises two points. One, you know whether or not it will be extended. I think if they were going to extend it, they probably wouldn't do it now anyway because it would take away. It's too soon. The take rush, take away the rush and the urgency, yeah. so mm. it would maybe do more damage than, than good if, yeah. if people are thinking, well, I've only got, what, 90 days or 60 days to, to access this, and they start to put it off. But if it doesn't get extended, hypothetically, what, what do you guys think next year has in store? Well, it's um, it, it's just created a massive bottleneck, really. Mm. I mean, like if they don't extend it, then, you know, I mean, all the pretty much all the land developers have run out of stock. Yeah. <coughs> so... Um, I mean, you know, you, it's not like, uh, you know, build, making a pizza. You can't just come in and, and yeah, <laughs> make it today. Build a block of land today and deliver mm. it tomorrow. 
Um, so yeah, these things take time. Yeah, our development team worked very hard to get new land on on ground to, to get it all moving. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it will slow down next year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, when at the moment, even at the moment, like when I when the home builder hit, I had about what forty lots to sell. Now I've got about two. Oh like wow! <laughs> so you and know, then I just whatever falls over, if one does, if one I'm does, yeah. Then it, and, but I mean, like I I actually did have a fall over last week, and I sold it. That like within six hours because I've mm. got a I've got a line of people a, yeah. who are who are ready to go so um, yeah so it puts pressure on the whole system really doesn't it Andrew like it puts pressure on these guys to develop puts put, put pressure on council approvals puts mm. pressure on the civil guys puts pressure on everybody but I mean we, Andrew we're don't more about that than me that's it we're pushing to get obviously uh, you yeah, know stages ready for early next year mm. um, shovel ready if you want to call it so that we can. Uh, release yeah. and um yeah again uh, if they extend it it'll be a short period so yeah. it'll be the same tumultuous time that <laughs> yeah we, we'll have to deal with it some way yeah, yeah somewhere along the line so, and we're thinking yeah there'll probably be yeah we, we, we're optimistic in queensland that uh yeah there'll be some inter uh, interstate migration mm. given that there's no massive uh, immigration um and again if you were locked down or you know facing things down in a in a unit in uh, in the southern states and yeah. the capitals there or, or you're looking at cans, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or 500 square meters, or 400 square meters at Ripley. You know, you'd want to have uh, a little bit of a room. It's room been the too. greatest tourism ad for Queensland. Yeah, this whole thing hasn't absolutely. it? You know, even like Queenslanders. I think you said it last week. Like we've got friends at the moment who are. I've seen like, it's all that's in my news feed. Like people holidaying at the Whit Sundays mm. or Hamilton Pe- Island. People didn't like know it was up here. Yeah, like, yeah. I've seen heaps of people going like, "Where's this on their comments?" They live in Melbourne. I'm like. It's with Sundays have always been yeah, there. Yeah, like we're from <laughs> we're from towns also. We see we grew up with all that stuff, you yeah, know, yeah. we saw that. But uh yeah, absolutely mm. crazy. But I think I mean what what I think this home builder has done, I mean not just the home builder, but we've seen that the property market as a whole, we've gone through the March, April and everyone was doom and gloom, twenty, thirty percent down and you know, the world's gonna fall apart and if you buy a property you're you know, you're a mug, all that sort of stuff. But we've seen property just hold mm. and and now start to go up through such a turbulent time. Well, you compare that to the uh, the share market. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's very different. Yeah, no, it still hasn't recovered to where it was either. Mm. So no, no volatility. You you lost your head. Yeah, no, so I haven't got the voice, the, the volume. Oops. Oh, there there we is. go. There it is. <laughs> oh, <perfect. laughs> just, just give it a tap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Just kick it. It's like the old washing machine. You just <laughs> kick it when you get it going. No, but um, what I think this first time build is it's got a wave of momentum around the property market. I mean, we saw West, I think Westpac came out a couple of weeks ago saying they expect twenty percent in Brisbane in terms of price growth over the next two years or whatever it is. So what I'm starting to see, and, and then rents, vacancy rates are going down, rents are going higher, rental yields are, are you know becoming greater. So there's starting that investor investors from interstate are starting to come back into the market too. Well, again, you mentioned it earlier, the value proposition you know, from Melton, 600, yeah. you know, 600K, you know, 50-odd Ks out of Melbourne, mm. um, or, or a 400, $420,000 package here, which has got mm. a, better, a better yield. Yeah, um, it's pretty hard to uh, to go past that, and the yeah you know, the growth story that is yeah. southeast Queensland. Yeah. Um, you know, for us Ripley, yeah, you know, with Springfield, the success of Springfield next door. Yeah, the Ripley project is an easy one to sell. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, the, the the growth that will come at the some point through there. The growth, yeah. yeah. I mean, the growth is there. I mean, like I always say to people when they come in, like you know, Ripley, the whole Ripley PDA sort of. The priority development area out there is what Springfield was 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah, and you know, like the yeah. look, look what's happened to the prices of Springfield. I mean, it's just the people can't afford. They're 10 minutes down the road on the Centenary Highway there at Ripley. I mean, I, mm. I bought there. I was the very first um, retail buyer in in the Ripley Valley PDA. So I bought yeah. back just after Anzac Day in 2014. So um, yeah, I've been out there a, a long time. So and you've got that massive site, like what a 500 meters from Ripley Valley down near Coles, that will be expanded into a massive shopping centre. Yeah, that's part of the Sekasui um, yeah. Sekasui House development as far as the Echo Ripley thing. And um, yeah, that whole. I mean, when I moved in, there was no Coles there. There was no. Mm. There was nothing there. I mean, where um, were you travelling, Springfield, to get your groceries and that? Yeah, yeah, or Yamanto. So mm. e- and way. that shopping centre is getting big, big full. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. huge. Yeah, it's going massive as well. It's so gone up so quickly. Yeah. So I remember going there. It was only a couple of months. Oh, probably what six months ago. It was just a. Yeah, it's levelled everything, but now it's. Yeah, yeah, it's coming it's out up. of the ground. Yeah, I mean that's what people get out there and they just go, "What's happening out here?" Like when I bought, there was Echo and there was um, Providence was about to start. Mm. Now we've got. I mean, yeah, we're in the middle. We're, we're in a really fortunate position to be in the middle of the centenary in the Cunningham Highways, mm. which yeah. gives you both, both accesses connectivity. into the connectivity is phenomenal. Um, but yeah, there's there's about what is there eight eight estates within five minutes of, of where I am now. So it's uh, 
And people say, oh, the competition that must be bad for you. No, it's fantastic for us because it just creates Heaps this... Of people, creates yeah. this, yeah, it, it's... Activity yeah. creates... Cre- activity. Yeah. Activity well, creates I remember activity. speaking to Noren Sin and Thambi at Springfield like a couple of years ago. And he said, we're at the point, the hardest part about this whole thing was the capital, ma- like the mass, the g- getting the people here because you just get the... I think Maha says, you know, bring the people and, and everything, they will come. Mm. You know, so like... Once you get all those people, you've got eight estates and they're selling and their people are living there, then your shopping centres, your train stations, Schools. all those services mm. that people, your pubs, they start to come there, you know, and, that, and that's and that's when that's when the action really starts. And that whole Ripley hasn't seen anything yet compared to what's, it's what's just to come. It's about to go, yeah. Well, I just look at when I started at Springfield in, yeah. you know, in early 2000 and there was nothing yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. You know, and you've now got... The data centre, the, the hospital, yeah. the shopping GE. centre, mm. you know, the swimming pool. A $1.7 billion yeah. train line. You the know. train line, that's yeah. it. There's so much at, there now. And you look at, I think, is it an eight-minute drive, ten-minute drive max to yeah. get from Ripley to Springfield? Yeah, from my house and to Orion is 12 minutes. Yeah. And the land price is now, like I just looked at the newest release in Springfield, you're looking at a minimum now of around 300000 unless you're getting, you know, for a 12 and a half wide block unless you want to go to 10 metres of build a double. Mm-hmm. You're looking around 300 where in Ripley Valley you can get around 205 for mm-hmm. the same size 12 and a half metre block. It's yeah. For, for only eight minutes, it's a, bit, it's a good value it's proposition a to save some money on yeah. land. It's and the ma- there's such a massive disparity, like even like you're talking in Narang, but like it, it seems like, quaint, like you've got those like North Lakes, the Mango Hills, and then you go like five, ten minutes and you, you are jumping off the cliff in terms of price point. It just sort of makes sense, right? And they're all starting to sell out and starting to move on. Like mm. those developments aren't there anymore. The infrastructure's there, but there's no land sales available in North Lakes, as we know. And then you're like five, ten minutes down the road, I'm, I'm 100 grand less. And it's hard mm. on great. the north side for us as well because it's, it's not much land available. Mm. Like you guys it's have It's very fragmented on what mm. you can develop. So it's very yeah. small. Yeah, we, we're obviously looking at acquisitions yeah. and, uh, and trying to find... We started off saying uh, when we got here and uh, our acquisitions manager was, was like, yep, yeah, 300, yeah, minimum 300s. We're now looking at 50 lot subdivisions because yeah, right. you know, the fragmentation within southeast Queensland, it's not like Victoria where... You know, they release a parcel and, and there's flat, you can flat build, you can no build trees, yeah. no problems. <laughs> and, right. uh, it's called Ridge View. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. So well, it used to have a ridge on it. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> As yeah. the name suggests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, it is very hard to find, you know, mm. parcels to uh, to develop. And obviously then they're very hotly uh, yeah, you know, contested. contested. So. And, and what's the timeline that you've got, I guess, just for the listeners that are based here in Brisbane, that you've got in Ridge View? What sort of how many lots in the years that you're expecting to sell that in versus what you've got in Ripley Valley? Because I know Ripley Valley is quite large, mm. which I had to go through last time that I was out there realizing yeah, yeah. how big it was. Yeah, it's a lot bigger than it first seems. Yeah, but the the Ripley Valley is so uh, our project Ripley Valley. Yeah. Um, we've got eight hundred and thirty odd lots there, and we're um, you know t- circa two hundred two hundred and twenty in. So mm. we're um, we've still got you know six hundred lots to go. <laughs> yep. Five or six years, depending on how quickly Him. that's it. How quickly he can sell them. The so way the way uh, he's going, it'll be three years. That's it. He started really well, so the quicker the better for him and, and all of us in the end. But um, uh, the Narangba project's got six hundred, just over six hundred and um, so yeah, six hundred twelve well. pro- uh, lots actually. So um, yep. it's uh, and we're again we're about a hundred and well we're hundred and sixty in because we've done one, two, and three. So and we're building stage four. So we're just. Mm. We're closer to 200, so we're already getting close to a third of mm. the way through that project. So. And, and with the civil, sco- um, civil guys on site, it, obviously a lot of developers at this time are wanting civils done to try and move their stock mm. more forward, or especially when the home builder came out, was everyone get the phone bring, book in civils? How do you find mm. managing the civil companies? Are they understaffed? Are they pushed out so in timelines because they're spread so thin on multiple sites? So, so when we talk about relationships with, yeah. um, you know, with the builders, mm. we obviously uh, we, uh, wish to maintain and look to maintain relationships with our civil guys as well. Yep. And um, yeah, through the, the ups and the downs. And uh, we've got a very strong relationship with our civil contractor and uh, you know, they, they've supported us very much in, uh, in bo- at both Ripley and at, uh, oh yeah. at, Spr- at Springfield. No at <laughs> at Narangba. Yeah. So... And we have a yeah uh, a great um, a great contractor uh, up in Cairns too, which uh, yeah our project there is um, we, we're just titling about seventy lots now, uh, yeah. and again we gave them very short notice on uh, yeah on getting um, the the project or the the stages going. So obviously like everyone else, we ran it, yeah it all happened very quickly yeah. and yeah, uh, yeah it's the second stage our stage sixteen up there. Um, I think we uh, we only got operational works approval uh, about um, well 
four, five weeks ago, and we've got AC down at the moment. So uh, wow. and, and heading into council for titles in the next uh, the next two weeks. And do you think so. councils are going to be equipped enough to deal with the amount of lodgements that are going through, going through <laughs> there? Because obviously, got, we've got three months. Like from a, mm. I know we're from a construction point mm. of view. Yeah. Yeah. Like private certifiers and all that aren't equipped to handle the volume out there. Like this whole three month thing is an absolute. Yeah. Nightmare it's because the bottleneck, yeah. you've got covenants yeah. that are you know trying to go through hundreds of covenant applications and everything wants it. Everyone wants it yesterday, and you've mm. got just the drafting companies so, yeah, doing right. plans. Their plans are you like this is urgent, but then they get urgent from yeah, everyone. That's right. yeah, Everything's that's urgent, right. yeah. you know. Yeah. I, th- I think it's going to be interesting. You know, we're halfway through October. We're in the same boat as everyone. We're uh, pushing at the moment to yeah. get plan sealing. Um, I keep using the phrase it's going to be an absolute tidal wave going into <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah into council and then everybody pushing mm. to get um you know their plans sealed through council and then uh, into titles into you know um, DNR and uh, it'll be interesting to see how that all is managed by uh, DNR and council because mm. you know if there's uh, backlogs there the um uh, there's going to be plenty of upset developers and uh, and clients, and that's so. the thing. Yeah. Like, who, who's going to handle this? Like, because there's going to be people missing. If if it's if they're going to hold people to this three month thing and and do all that, like, there's there's going to be a wave of like consumer <laughs> affair <laughs> type is. like nonsense because it's not achieve like really it's not achievable. Like in terms no. of from our point, three months. Mm. Like with fine, you look at ANZ. They've got forty two days before they pick up a file. Mm. They won't give finance to execute a contract. So, like you've got no chance. Like it's <laughs> Hindsight, I get it. To hindsight, it's a wonderful thing, and they would love to go to the marketplace with, you know, certainty about what was going to happening happening. But he had all the other, you know, other stuff to deal with. But I mean, it's, it's certainly going to be interesting to see how it plays out. You know, within mm-hmm. terms of governing and getting this twenty five thousand to people and. Well, yeah, the the reality work. is, yeah, we're building all of these stages uh, on yeah. uh, unconditional contracts. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, we could finish them all, and uh, and all of this could fall over, and yeah. we'll be left standing there with, uh, you know, <laughs> correct, w- with yeah. a whole bunch of lots. So yeah. Yeah. lots registered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and how do you how are you finding? Because we're just speaking about the first home buyers in both the states, like Narangbar at the moment, and then you've got Ripley Valley. Have you had many investors start stepping back into the market? Have have you seen that come at all? No, not yet. Um, yep. Not a lot at this stage. I mean, the the home builder just pushed the the investors um, out. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much because I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you've got the builder channels and you've got your investor channels and you've got your retail. I mean, ninety nine percent of what I sold in the last uh, couple of weeks was all retail, like mm. people walking yep. in and 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 you know and through like first home buyers through guys like yourself. So. Um, look, the investor market will definitely come back. I mean, it, it, I, I've we're always getting we're getting calls about yeah. it now already. It yeah. is well, certainly guys wanting back. to get stock and look at uh, you yeah. know certainly but on stock. We, we're t- it, we've seen it increase. We're taking some over, um, like the one that just went on. Um, one of them is is an investor, but they're they're starting to come back. I got good news last week for my house as well. Landlord insurance has just come back online oh. at some places because that's been offline since COVID. Right. So I just got a, um, a, con- a message yesterday saying Terry she is you know, looking mm. back at landlord insurance, but before then you couldn't get it. So any loss of rent, etc., wasn't available for anyone. For you know, properties being finished or purchasing. So. Yeah. So let's talk. So so for the viewers at home, I mentioned here in the um, in in the uh, intro, you guys pride yourselves on building attractive residential communities, and we we hear the word a lot: master plan community. Whether it be twenty lots or <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or five thousand, take us through what a master plan because you guys are developing master plan communities, right? Hmm. Well, I think a master plan community is uh, is a Springfield and a Ripley. So, okay, you know it, that's the bigger part of it. We're yeah. doing yeah a part of that, and it is master plan where um, where our roads go, where do we, where the intersections go, where the schools going, the neighbourhood centre. You know that is part hmm. of the planning. Um, so you, you can call that master planning, but you know when you're doing 600 straight lots and uh, there's there's no other parts to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th- there's planning involved, obviously. Yeah, of course. But um, I wouldn't call it that part of master plan yeah. community. And so with a with with developments, I mean, even 600 lots, it's still a quite. What's that? Probably a 10 year, pro- five to 10 year project. Well, yeah. we're two years in, and so yeah, six 
six, five, yeah. six years. Mm. Yeah, you look at, um, yeah, we, we, we're we comfortable around 100 lots a year. We'd yeah. love to do more. Yeah. Um, but to keep the, yeah. <laughs> I love to do well. <laughs> Bring it on. KPI <laughs> just increased. <laughs> to, to, to keep the sales guys going. We need to talk to you about that. That's <laughs> it, to keep the business going. But the other thing that we all, yeah, that everything is run off is uh, for the models that we do is escalation. Mm. So, uh, you know, you've got to find a balance between, uh, you know, selling quickly and uh, and getting revenue escalation yeah. on your uh, on your lots for the projects. Yeah. And so with that, I mean, with it's not as if it's a flyby. It's not as if it's ten blocks and it'll be gone, you know, tomorrow or it'll take three months to get through. Obviously, there's a lot of forward thinking that has to go in, in into a project, even of that size, um, which is still quite large, because what we've seen in the past happen is sometimes developers lack that uh, foresight to to understand that the things they do early. And you, I'm sure you guys have been through estates at the start. And, and you go through the start of a state, it's like, oh, my God, what happened here? You know, and, and it's, it got, it's a beautiful state through, but you've got, like, you know, like a dual lock or you've got, mm. you know, all this weird and wacky stuff that doesn't present aesthetically, which is obviously going to st- scare off probably investors or even first-home buyers because they want to be part of that. Wanna, they want to drive through the estate like you do when you go through Ripley Valley. Mm. You want to get those warm and fuzzy feelings like, this is nice, honey, this is great. You know, there's obviously a lot of forward planning that goes into that. I think the difference yeah. with being large, you know, a large developer doing this time and time again versus someone that's small, it's their, f- you know, third or fourth time or they get desperate when times are tough to move land, which is what I've seen sometimes where the entry statement or what they've allowed to be built is, okay, we just need to get rid of the lots to get mm. stage one underway. Yeah. And unfortunately that impacts the Get some cash back in yeah. the door, you know. It's a, it's a part of the reality, yeah. unfortunately, but uh, you've got to balance how mm. and, um, you know, the, the long term. You know, and in the Rangbar project, um, we've done a really good job there, and Ripley, obviously, mm. as well. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I think too. Like it depends on on the, the where the estate's positioned as well. Yeah. Like, like uh, there's some estates where there's one entry and there's one and there's one exit, so you you can really make the entry statement look fantastic, mm. and that's the in and out point. With Ripley Valley Estate, like we've got a very good road that runs right through the middle, um, so it's kind of like there's not one way in and one yeah, way yeah. out sort of thing. So as far as an entry statement goes. Yeah, it's not it, ours. Isn't probably as grand as what some of them could be, but it doesn't have to be. Because no, that's right. Because the road runs, you know, straight through the middle of it. So yeah, yeah, and which gives you access, and you know, you don't have to visibility. Yeah, visibility. <laughs> you don't have to drive into the estate and then live at the back and take your ten minutes to get yeah, yeah. from the start from the estate to the back of the estate. So yeah. And so what do you, what do you um, you know you guys limiting investor to owner occupier ratios, making sure that they because uh, as we know, owner occupiers will ninety nine percent of the time look after their homes or mow their grass do their weeds all that sort of <laughs> stuff yeah, yeah. That, that investors so you know i'm sure you guys have again been through states where you can tell it's all investors and it doesn't present as well particularly when you've got a, a, a project that's you know six or seven eight years um lifespan you want to make sure that it looks presenting because presents well today and it will present well in six years otherwise you're not you're going to i suppose detract from from the appearance yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's got to be a balance. I mean, mm. any 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 estate that says they don't have investors in order to get more owner ox is yeah is lying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you yeah. know, unless it's like a I don't know, maybe even a Brookwater or something like that, where a block costs you five hundred grand. Yeah. So, I mean, there's got to be a balance. I mean, um, I mean, Andrew's been there from the from the beginning at Ripley Valley Estate, but I mean, I I, I personally think it goes through a bit of a. I mean, we obviously try to limit the amount of not limit the amount of investment, but you know, encourage a hell of yeah. a lot more owner ox. But I think it goes through, it works on, uh, if you looked at it over a period of time, it'll go on the flow of what, what incentives are out there. Mm. Like when the home builder comes in, all of a sudden the investors drop off. Like stage three in, in Ripley Valley, there's very limited investors in there, whereas you know, stage one might, might have more. So mm. it just depends on what's happening in the finance market and what incentives are out there from the government for first home buyers, first home owner grants, all that sort of stuff. Mm. It sort of dictates the actual percentages, but... Well, the renters are uh, a future purchasers as well. Yeah, so that's right. You yeah. know, it's good they to have a percentage in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. And so, from an estate standpoint, you guys are obviously because, as a land developer, you know, we have a th- you guys have a thing called covenants as well, which will, uh, I suppose, assist in keeping that aesthetic, you know, I suppose, uh, consistent through through all of your estates. Correct. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do. Short answer is you set you set a benchmark, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's what it's there for yeah. is to uh, to make sure that uh, yeah the estates present well. Mm. So yeah. yeah, I had a classic example yesterday. A bloke came in and wanted to build a. Uh, he said, "Can I build a container home in, in here?" And I said, 
No. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> yeah, like that's... Um, it's not going to get approved. No, yeah. I said, look, it's fine. I said, and I, as I said to him, I said, look, yeah, you can build a beautiful container home. Like this one over at um, Thornlands or somewhere that's got about 17 containers worth about 5 million bucks. I mean, you can you can make some rippers out of them if you wanted to. But I'm not, I, I basically said to him, I'm not going to trust you to put two containers on the thing and live in it and... Uh, yeah, that's just going to totally take away from the entire estate. And that's what yeah. covenants are for. Covenants to protect the values of the estate. That's that's yeah. that's the main reason that they're there. Yeah, because yeah, you can drive through something you're like, oh, God, it was so lovely, but I don't want to be neighbours with mm. that thing, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just oh, <laughs> awful. Absolutely awful. But look, what we've seen, I mean, over over your guys' lifespan, I've mentioned 35 years of collective experience between, you, between both of you. But what are you guys seeing in terms of you, the, the block sizes? Because... 375 square meter block, 400 square meter block is a big block in, in today's, you know, or an average block. Or probably yeah. It probably is on the upper side of the big... It's, you know. it's what most developments will have. Like, that'll be 70% of their block sizes but I have this the time. I have Four, 375 to 400, I think. Oh, I have yeah. this... Uh, not an argument, but I have this discussion with people and I, I sort of explain to them, particularly maybe the generation, like my parents or my grandparents, and I, you know, I tell them, you know, you know, whatever, I bought a 400 square meter block or whatever it is. They're like, oh, you know, goodness me, that's you know, that's smaller. But I'm saying that's what that's what people love. Mm. You know, people don't love to spend hours in their yard, particularly when you've got an estate with parks and mm. everything's on your doorstep. You know, why would you want to spend your weekend in your in your small backyard when you can go right across the road? And developers like yourself are spending so much cash on these mm. awesome playgrounds. Like mm. we, as a kid, I used to have this twirly ball thing. You just jump on and she spins you and you vomit afterwards. Mm. That's all <laughs> it was. Now you've got these obstacle courses and rock climbing. It's you amazing. Barbecues there. You got so many things that you know. And <coughs> when you go there, they they pack you out on mm. a weekend. If you go to where the, the you know the where the estates have their um, you know especially if they do a new park release like they did mm. at Echo Rip. I remember going there. I was like. You can't even park anywhere to go no, there. Yeah. Yeah. They're completely chockers. So people are utilising them all the time instead of having the backyard mm. saving the money. The lot sizes have come down. There's there's yeah. no arguing that. And um, yeah. you know, that's it's partly there. The uh, the low maintenance. Uh, another part, another factor is actually, um, you yeah, know, it's councils pushing to get densities um, to mm. pay for the services of the parks, um, the cleaning of the parks, and all the other services that are needed. Yeah, so right. And affordability as well, of course. You know, affordability like, is mm. a big one. Yeah. So and, and and from your from from a developer standpoint, you guys obviously when you're doing your, your development approvals and your planning schemes, is that something council is making you do in terms of putting uh, facilities in in these estates? They're aware of of, of that uh, and and in getting that infrastructure or that those parks in those estates. Of course, council, uh, you know, that in the master planning of the council yep. areas, uh, you know, look at where where parks go, um, where they where they're suited. Uh, how many lots, um, mm. you know, all of those things as to how many lots per area um, for a park, uh, different size parks, you've got local parks, neighbourhood parks, mm. um, and then you get, you know, the examples of, um, you know, Springfield where you've got a, a district... Um, lagoon. Yeah, lagoon. Yeah, so yeah. Two and inches bigger than the South Bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, don't forget, like and, and probably, you yeah, know, just as uh, frequented. Yeah. So it's I think they said yeah. 400,000 visitations in the first two years, so wow. in the f- year on year. So. You, you, and you, go, you drive past every weekend, it is packed. Yeah. You Absolutely cannot get packed. a spot there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And the other thing is too, I mean, after we build these parks, I mean, council have to have some input because after we've built them and people move in, they've got to maintain them. Maintain them, yeah. 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 we don't, so... I mean, we do up to a certain point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then there's a handover, obviously. Yeah, it does. And so, Brooke, um, tell us about Ripley Valley, the estate itself, because it's such an amazing area. You mentioned priority development area with so much infrastructure, and the government's obviously incentivizing you know organisations to get into that area and start businesses as well. Tell us about the Ripley Valley story, the estate, but also around Ripley, uh, Ripley itself, because. I think it's real. It's an area that we love, and it's an area that I think if you can provide some input and te- and in uh, context to, to why you like it, why you know sadly you're there and and the and the stuff to come, it it'll really make sense a lot of people. Yeah, look, um, the like if you go back six seven years when uh, I first moved down here from uh, from Townsville, um, we used to drive down Ripley Road, and my kids just started at Raceview State School. We're living at Springfield at the time, and um, we're driving through, and I was thinking, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's beautiful. It's farmland, it's undulating hills, and yeah. all this sort of stuff. I thought, oh, this is a bit weird how it's sort of in the middle of nowhere. And then my my sister in law actually said to me, she said, oh, there's a new estate going in there, and that's and funnily enough, like you know, two years later, I'm I'm, I'm living 
living in that pile that bit of dirt there now. So, I mean, to take it back to the and correct me if I'm wrong, wrong Andrew, with my um, my priority development area knowledge, but um, but basically the uh, for any of the, the the people listening who don't understand what a what a PDA is. Um, a, a PDA is a priority development area that um, the state government under EDQ, which is the Economic Development Queensland, basically designate an area as, as a PDA area, which means that basically developers um, or the, you know, the farmers can sell their blocks to developers. Developers can then, can then come in and the approvals are then done through EDQ, not through the council. Is that correct? So Ripley's a bit different where it's been uh, the uh, delegated from EDQ, the responsibility has been delegated to Ipswich City Council. So... We're, it's a bit different there, but we do have effectively now two masters um, at uh, at the Ripley PDA. Um, the other PDAs are generally administered by EDQ. Yeah, yeah. Right. so so I guess what and and, the, and when I'm sort of talking about that area, I mean, because you've got that overlying sort of state government influence as well. Um, I mean, we all know state governments look after you know the main the main roads that go yeah. in, like you've got the Cunningham Highway on one side, you've got the Centenary Highway on the other side. Um, so the rail the line that's coming. The rail line that's coming. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it'll be extended. Don't it'll we? be extended one day. Yeah, we'll be in boxes, but it'll get out there. Um, look, it will happen. The, the rail, the rail line will come, and and that that's the whole point of it. I mean, the state government, when you've got bigger bigger bodies or bigger you know, government organisations that can have more say in in certain areas, and they want more density in certain areas, like the like the Ripley Valley PDA. It just gives everyone a bit more certainty when they are putting in a Coles, putting in a, mm. a bakery, putting in a, a service station, you know, building another McDonald's, <laughs> putting in KFC, mm. whatever it might be. Um, and then, of course, what comes with that is the, you know, all the main thoroughfare roads get upgraded. You know, the Ripley Road now is is nothing like what it was you know, five, six, seven years ago. Um, the schools are all coming in. Like, you know, we've got a proposed school going into our estate. There's a new one just opened over the road at South Ripley. There's about another two or three planned um, for, for that area. Um, yeah, Ipswich. Well, there's is 18 schools in the Ripley PDA. Yeah, yeah wow. I think it's 18. Yeah, but it's, it's a big number. Yeah, wow. Mm. Yeah, and I mean that just goes to show what they're anticipating the the forward projected population yeah. growth mm. is. Like it's just crazy. Like we do, um, we do like acoustic um, um, uh, ratings on our, on our blocks. And the acoustic rating on the Ripley Road is actually based off 2029 acoustics. Right. <laughs> as in what it will be in 2029. Like, uh, yes, yeah, so they're, they're forward looking at, at that road changing dramatically over mm. the next 10 years, getting a lot more traffic through it. I mean, obviously, I mean, there was never any traffic lights on Ripley Road. Now there's one, two, there's two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I mean, and, and it's, just, it's not a big stretch of road, like no. as, you, as you know. So, look, all of those things are out there. You know, I mean, as I said, uh, before I I was one of the very, well, the first retail buyer in the Ripley in the Ripley PDA um, back just after Anzac Day 2014 I bought the block I've been living there now for five and a half years and when I moved in there was you know to go to a, sh- a shopping center or a, a, a doctor or a dentist or a vet or anything like that I had to either go to Umanto or to Orion now that's mm. only ten minutes each way but now it's, it's all on your doorstep it's, it's two minutes mm. like yeah. it's just two minutes down the road. It's so on Ripley Road, where you bought, where the estates are. Exactly, it's right there. <laughs> exactly. It's right there, and you know, and then you, then you go to the parks, you go to everything else. Like, there's just so much that um, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting yeah. to to be in in an area like like I grew up out in uh, in Warwick, out um, out west there, and then I've I've lived in Cairns. I've I've never lived in new estates, and to see this all grow has just been been phenomenal. And like, yeah, what these boys do in relation to development. Is um is yeah is is amazing. So it's pretty cool. And and we t- often talk about like property research, and you have these <coughs> research companies and, and experts, and they're all well and good. But for me, I just look at the where the McDonald's is going, where the Coles <laughs> is going, because I can tell you, no matter how no matter how good mm. Bernard Bernard Salt is or Terry Ryder, and they're all really really great, but McDonald's and those guys are spending mm. billions of dollars of research and de- on, on research and development to pinpoint where their next site's going to be. Yeah, Coles, yeah. Coles, so, don't, so Coles don't put a Coles in in the middle of nowhere. Correct. No. Yeah. And we've got a neighbourhood centre coming uh, very soon uh, with a, uh, a couple of fast food, you know, yeah. so right in the middle of our project. So Yeah, right. Mm. And so you've got, so oh, in, wow. in terms of the, the project itself, you've got retail to come inside in the, in the project itself? A small amount, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not it's like a... It's a neighbourhood centre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like an Orion. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there'll be like a, I don't know, like a, a local service like centre and yeah, a childcare. Yeah, yeah, nice. like that's IGA. the convenient stuff and that makes it, you know, makes it easy to, to for residents to live, and especially if you don't occupy, just nick down there and 
grab the ultimate burger meal. Hmm. And you've got a major <laughs> shopping centre already 500 metres yeah, yeah, from right. there, so the need to have yeah. one is, well, yeah. it's, you just drive out of your driveway and it's just right down there on the same road that's that you're right. based yeah, it's on. It's just so local amenities. That's yeah. what that's for. And then you drive down to, uh, yeah, Orion. Oh, sorry. The development centre there is massive, what it's going to be. Like, I actually went and looked at the site and I'm like, wow, that's... It looks huge on the plan, yeah. yeah. I mean, w- I don't know too much about the ins and outs of what Echo, what Sega Studio are going to be doing with it, but yeah. if they if they develop the plan that they originally had, it'll be yeah, it's huge, monstrous, yeah. massive. Yeah. Mm. Well, they're one of the biggest in the world, Sega Studio. They're, they're the biggest builder in the, the world. They're the, they're the biggest home builder, builder yeah. in the world. Yeah, mm. yeah. so mm. it's <laughs> mm. they've obviously got the even if if that's what they've projected, they'll probably deliver that as well. Yeah, obviously it's they've got the skills. So, to what's it. the demographic like? What are you seeing in terms of uh, what does the traditional purchaser look? Coming into your office at Ripley Valley, young families or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, yeah, young families, and also the other side of it is um, older, older non what do you call it empty nesters who yep. who are coming off acreage and their kids have bought <laughs> you know either in our estate or in the new Ripley mm. Valley in the Ripley PDA and they just want to be closer to them. So yeah. you know a bit of a combination, a bit of both, but yeah, but young families is definitely the way to go. Many yeah. defence guys just yes. from Amberley yeah. come through. Yeah. yeah, very much so. Um, Tom, I, I didn't, I, I forgot to mention that. I mean, Amberley Air Base is going to be, I believe, it's going to be the largest military base in Australia when it's all finished out there. Yeah, yeah. wow. Um, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. some yeah. significant investment going out there. Not just yeah. um, RAF. I think Army's uh, yeah. moving mm-hmm. some stuff out there as well yeah. from Anogra. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Someone will probably fact check me on that. <laughs> like a, like we a put a disclaimer like on Trump, everyone. Yeah, that but, um, we can't guarantee. But these yeah. guys know what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but how close is that? Like, <laughs> as a drive, it's, it's yeah, very close. Yeah, it's ten minutes. Like it's yep. just, you just go down the um, well, either way, down the centenary or down the cunning in my way, and um, yep. and and you're there. I mean, yeah, it's there's a lot of military in there. Like I, when I lived in Townsville, one in eight people in Townsville left to garrison town. So one yep. in eight people in Townsville was um, was involved in the military and. With this happening at Amberley, um, the same is going to happen if it hasn't already. Um, the, you know, there's a lot of military guys come in, but um, it's just going to get more and more and more. I mean, yeah, but that a lot of them bring families, and that yeah, adds yeah, to stability right. though too. You it know, does. like I mean, it's not as if you're in a mining town and and it that Colin, you know, Collinsville yeah. or whatever, in t- and it shut. It's all over. That's you know, right, yeah. military is always always going to be you know, yeah. going to be there and employed and not economically yeah you know, like not, n- not financially yeah. busiest yeah. they've ever been yeah that's, that's right. it they've, <laughs> yeah. they've kept going <laughs> through COVID exactly yeah. right. more so than anyone yeah, that's yeah right. exactly and that's we're getting used to like put, put going between the estates and seeing like military guys they're like oh this is weird this yeah, is yeah. The first <laughs> time I've seen that yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, that whole in supply versus demand really is, is what's going to come, like what anything, you know, property economics 101, it's all supply versus demand. And if there's more people wanting to buy than there is available stock, whether it be anything, any product in the world, then prices prices go up. And, up. and with as I said, with the wave of owner-occupiers, but, but it's just the perfect little spot, both those Narang Bars and, and Ripley, because that is right in the bang of the price point, isn't it, that where people are playing with. And so... More than ever, like he's just seeing his owner occupiers, just love it, and and particularly on the back of the whole work from home, you know, mm. situation whereby people don't have to work in Brisbane CBD anymore. Why would you want to live in a, in a one bedroom apartment and be confined to it for 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 three weeks every now and then? You'd want to be out at Ripley yeah. or, or anywhere. Yeah, you know. that, is that a prediction? <laughs> <laughs> Call me an Nostradamus, but you know, we're saying it's in our water now. That's yeah. what the next yeah. call of COVID is. Yeah, yeah well, I've, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Anyway, that's why I'll drink up. <laughs> <laughs> that's spring water, mate, from some mountain. <laughs> oh, no, they're actually going to sponsor that. It's 200 bucks if I say. The perfect traveler, Fantel, water, 600. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, boys, we've got to start to wrap this up. But uh, really, really appreciate you guys stopping by and, and having a chat mm. about uh, Sadly Property Group and your own journeys into, into the property space. Now, Brooke, how do people get in contact with you to chat about Ripley Valley and and, uh, and potential purchasing a block out there? Yeah, look, the best way, uh, I mean, you can, <laughs> you can go through you guys if you like, but... Um, <laughs> but My uh, number is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, look, I, I am on site out there um, Saturday through Wednesdays at the um, at our, our land sale centre there at the Ripley, yep. at Ripley Valley. But the other the other way to do it, obviously, is just go straight to our website, type in Ripley Valley Estate. Yep. Um, and um, and you'll end up you'll end up seeing um, my lovely face sitting at the bottom of the <laughs> picture there somewhere. We do have um, all of our information online. Unlike a lot of developers, we've got our, um, um, our even our price list is actually online. Yeah, wow. Which, which is um, very uh, very unusual. I've never worked for a developer who actually who is that transparent. 
So we've got that, and it's pretty much live. So as soon as I access something or as soon as I sales offer it in CRM, it um, takes an hour or so, then it comes off the price list. So that's, um, that's a very good thing. But um, always give me a call anyway. My number's all there on the, on the website as well. But always give me a call because we've always got stages coming up that, yeah. aren't, that aren't on that price list. And, or, um, or fallovers that could be maybe a better option. Mm. That's exactly yeah. right. So, um, yeah, so give us a buzz. And it's also good to talk to people about what, you know, what they really want because then I can figure out what it's options. just the best option. That's yeah. right, because what they think might be the best option may not be. So we can always talk about that and, um, and even talk about house options like AMX New Home Sales. So I do understand that side of it as well. So that must provide, that must be really, um, you know, comforting for your clients because a lot of the time the land sales guy, you know, or girl will will just try and get get the block done and and have no understanding of yeah. the cost that if comes it's be with. Sighted. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It, you know, there's three meters of floor fall or whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah. So you can sit there genuinely and say, look, you know, mm. this, yeah, this block is that sixty square meters bigger and it is a little bit cheaper because it's a bit of fall or whatever. But you can say, but just be aware that on the construction side, no matter who you go with, it's probably going to be another ten grand worth of cost. Yeah, that must really make them make them rest easy in their decision yeah well i, I mean i hope so i mean that, that that's one of the things i pride myself on like i'll i'll give them the you know give them the uh the plan turn it over and draw a, a, a rectangle on it and sort of say look there's your built to boundary there's there's that there's yeah. set back you can put a shed there you can put a pool there as long as it's one meter from there blah mm. blah 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 <laughs> And, uh, and they sort of go, oh, that's pretty good. I go, now go and get that sorted probably because <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my dimensions might be right out. But, yeah, yeah. Um, but at least then they've got an idea of what they can do. So Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah no, awesome. And Andrew, uh, in terms of the Sadly Property Group itself, is that sadly.com.au, is that the one? Yep. Yeah, perfect. Boys, thank you so much for coming yeah. in. We really Thanks, appreciate mate. it. Thanks, for coming, Thanks buddy. guys. And uh, everyone at home, thank you Thanks, very Tom. much for watching Everything Property by Pivotal Homes. Today's guests, of course, Brooke Anstey and Andrew Cook, Saturday Property Group. And until next time, we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.